All right, infinite geometric series. Remember, infinite means that it's going to keep going on and on and on forever. If you notice here, my sum has no n, and that's because it's infinite, because we can't count up to infinity. So there's no n value because it's an infinite. It keeps going forever and ever and ever. Now, a key part to this is right here. It says, if the absolute value of r is less than 1, or it's, it's, it's telling us that the absolute value of r has to be less than 1. So I'm going to tell you, if the absolute value of r, so that means I don't care if it's positive or negative, if that number is not less than 1, then we're going to have no sum. And this is where we get into limits. We're not going to get that specific with it. You're just going to say there's no sum. You actually can't add the numbers. So we'll watch for that. The only two values you need are your starting term. Oops, I didn't circle that very well, did I? Your starting term and your r. Let's practice some of these. All right, so again, all, all you need is a sub 1 and r. So a sub 1 is our first term a sub 1 is 1. I know that this is an infinite series because if you look, that dot 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 just means it's going to keep going on forever. So remember, there's no n. r is what's happening to get from one value to the next. So what do I multiply the 1 by to get to negative 3 fourths? What do I multiply negative 3 fourths by to get to positive 9 sixteenths? Since the signs are changing, I know it's going to be a negative r it's going to be negative 3 fourths. 1 times negative 3 fourths is negative 3 fourths. Notice that negative 3 fourths, depending if it's positive or negative, it definitely is less than 1, so we're good to go. We can do this. So the sum of this infinite series is a sub 1 is 1 over 1 minus negative 3 fourths. Remember, a minus minus becomes a positive, so this is 1 over 7 fourths. 1 divided by 7 fourths is really 1 times the reciprocal, so 1 times 4 sevenths. So my sum is 4 sevenths. All right, now maybe you're thinking, how is a list of numbers that never ends going to actually equal 4 sevenths? And again, this is where limits come into play and we don't really do limits so you'll understand these better next year but you would notice as you keep adding the numbers it would get closer and closer and closer to 4 7 so it actually approaches a sum of 4 7 all right let's try another one again I know that this is an infinite series because it's got the infinity sign on top so a sub 1 is right here a sub 1 is 5 r, we don't have to figure it out because they gave it to us right here, r is 0 0.8, which again, yes, it's less than 1, we're good to go. So I'm just going to plug this in. The sum, remember there's no n because it's infinite, is a sub 1 is 5 over 1 minus 0 0.8. Or I've got 5 over 0 0.2. 5 divided by 0.2 gives us a sum of 25. Next one. a sub 1. First number we see right here. So a sub 1 is negative 1 half. Notice the signs are changing, which means the only way you're going to make the sign go from positive to negative by multiplying is if your r is negative. So negative 1 half times what equals positive 1 fourth? negative one-half. Again, if you forget how to do that, take the second term and divide it by the first term. If you, you forget how to find r, if you can't just do it in your head. One-fourth times the reciprocal of that would be negative two over one. Negative two-fourths, same as negative one-half. All right, so one-half, you know, absolute value is one-half, is less than one, so we can do this problem. The sum of this infinite series is a sub 1, which is negative 1 half, over 1 minus negative 1 half. Lots of 1 halves. So I've got a negative 1 half in the numerator. Remember, minus minus becomes a plus. 
So that's going to give me 3 halves. When you divide fractions, you multiply by the reciprocal. So negative 1 half times 2 thirds is going to give me a negative 1 third. And again, I knew that was an infinite series because it didn't end. It kept going. All right, another infinite series. I can tell it's infinite because it's got the infinity sign. No n. It's never going to end. a sub 1, right here. a sub 1 is 3. r is what's in the parentheses. You know, raise to the exponent there. So my r value is 5 fourths. Always check. Is 5 fourths less than 1? Nope, 5 fourths is really 1 and 1 fourth. This is not less than 1. So since it's not less than 1, this is a great problem. You're done. There's no sum. You can't do it. It's not going to approach something where it will give us a final answer. Again, you'll do more with limits next year. All right, a couple application problems here. A pendulum that is released to swing freely takes 18 inches on the first swing. So, I mean, think about a pendulum. The pendulum's going to go like this. It's going to swing one way, and it says it's going to travel 18 inches on its first swing. Then it's going to swing back the other way. So, on each successive swing, the pendulum travels 80% of the distance of the previous swing. So, this time it's, you know, still went 18, but it only went 80% of the previous time. It's going to come back again this way. So this time, it's going to go, you know, still 18, but 80% of the previous swing. So now I've got 0.8 times 0.8. It's going to swing again. So I've got 18. It's only going to go 0.8 of its previous swing. So I've got three of these 0.8s. And it's going to keep going and going and going and going. So what's a sub 1? Um, wait, hang on one second. First it's saying what's the total? Total means I want the sum, so just kind of keep that in mind. All right, I need a sub 1. a sub 1 is 18. I need r. r is how much it's going to change each time. Well, it's 80% each time, so 0.8. So if you think about this, the first one is 18 plus... 18 times 0.8 plus 18 times 0.8 squared plus 18 times 0.8 cubed plus, and it's going to keep going. Now, notice a pendulum just keeps swinging and swinging and swinging. Since we can't actually count how many times it's going to swing, we're going to treat this as an infinite sum, because it's going to start swinging so, you know, back and forth so quickly that we're not going to be able to really count that, so again, we'll just treat it as an infinite. So the infinite sum says to do a sub 1, which is 18, divided by 1 minus r. Double check, is r, is the r value less than 1 is 0.8 less than 1. Yep, so we can do this. All right, so we're going to plug this into the calculator. I've got 18 divided by 1 minus 0.8 is 0.2. So the sum of the swings is 90 inches. Let's try one more. A rubber ball is dropped from a height of 60 feet. Each bounce takes it two-thirds of its previous height. I mean, so think about when you bounce a ball, at the very end it just kind of goes like da 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 So you can't really count those bounces. So again, we're going to treat this as an infinite problem. What I like to do with this one is you've got the ball and you're going to drop it from in a you know, 60 feet. That's where it started. From there, it bounces up and it bounces down. This time, it's going to bounce two-thirds of its previous height. So, notice it went up and it went down. So that's two distances. It went two. It was 60 the first time. 
So there's two sixties, but not really sixty because we need to multiply it by two thirds. It's only two thirds of what it was the first time. All right. From there, it's going to bounce up, and then it's going to bounce down again. So this time I've got, you know, it's up and down, so it's a two. It's sixty, but this time it's two-thirds of the previous one. So there's the previous one, and here's another two-thirds. So you could write two-thirds squared. Plus, we're going to do that again. So this time it would be two-thirds cubed, and then so on and so on and so on. A sub 1 is what we're trying to find here. Now, notice that all of these are a double bounce. So this one right here is kind of like an oddball because it only drops. So we're just going to have to add this odd one at the end. We're just going to add that at the end. I changed my odd to an add. All right, we'll call that the initial drop. So really, my a sub 1 term is whatever this gives me. So um, 2 times 60 is 120. 120 times 2 thirds is 120 times 2 thirds. We're just going to call it 120 times 2 thirds. That'll be our first term. So there's my a sub 1 because it's a full up down bounce. So here's a sub 1. My r is changing by 2 thirds each time. Again, we're treating this as an infinite because it just keeps going. So the sum is 120, a sub 1, we just remember we called it 120 times 2 thirds. You know, it actually is 80 if you want to, if you'd rather do that. But So 120 times 2 thirds over 1 minus r, r is 2 thirds. So when you do this work, I've got 80 divided by 1 third. Now keep in mind, this is not going to be my total sum because I had that initial drop right here that I have to add on to it. So this 60 is my initial, initial drop that I have to include. So 80 divided by 1 third is really 80 times 3, so that's 240. Plus 60 is going to give me a total of 300 feet that this rubber ball bounces. All right, so again, every time you can't count how many times something's happening, a pendulum, a bouncy ball, a swing, you know, we're going to treat this as an infinite or series. All right, go ahead and try your homework, and I will see you guys in class.